What's up YouTube, BMR here, and I've been wanting to make a video about the stock open differentials that come with your car, more specifically how to lock your stock open differential. So I made a lot of videos talking about the solid rear axle and going into the detail of why you want them. Basically, it'll make your car a lot more consistent. It'll make it so that the power delivered to both of your rear tires is the same. So that'll make it so that when you're drifting, it'll be a lot more stable. It'll be a lot more consistent drift. Your car will be a lot less likely to loop around on you. And you'll just all around have a much better time, especially if you're learning how to drift, since you won't be fighting the car. No, don't get me wrong, you can learn how to drift your car with stock open differentials, but like I said, you're gonna be fighting the car. It's gonna be a lot less fun because the car is gonna wanna loop on you. You can catch it before it loops, but the thing is, is having a solid rear axle, you're not gonna have to deal with that, so then you can really focus on finessing the car and just dialing in your skills. So there's a lot of videos on how to do this for like, say, a 10th scale car. There's probably dozens of videos on how to do it, but I haven't seen any on how to do it specifically for a Mini Z. Um, there could be somebody out there who's made this video and just YouTube hasn't recommended it to me. I've searched. I haven't seen anything. So I wanted to go ahead and make this for our community since the Mini Z saw uh, the Mini Z axles. This thing's tiny, guys. So it's it's the principles are the exact same as the big ones, but it's just so much smaller. So I wanted to go ahead and show you guys in detail how to do this and basically go over the mod. It's pretty simple and it'll be straightforward. Um, to perform this, you're gonna wanna have some kind of plastic bonder or just anything. Uh, you could use super glue, just any kind of glue that'll basically hold your gears and keep them in place. I'm using this since I have it on hand and it'll be really strong and there's no way that these gears are gonna come apart after I get it in there. The next thing that you're gonna want is, this is just a dental pick, but just basically something to mix around your, if, if you're using a two part bonder, you're gonna want something to mix it around, but more specifically, just something to apply it to your gears. If you're using some kind of thicker, fluid like this. If you're using a glue, I guess you could just put it in there. I didn't really think about just using super glue and dabbing it in there, but I want something stronger. So anyways, to do my method, you're going to need plastic bonder, uh, a pick to mix it, as well as to put that in your gears. And then I have a mixing tray over here, but basically you're going to need your glue and a screwdriver. So this thing has super, super tiny little screws back here. We only have three of them that we need to remove, but they're little micro screws. So you need the really fine uh, screw head or not screw head, a uh, screwdriver. Um, and on open differentials, normally these little spider gears in here, they will have a bunch of grease on them to keep them super smooth. So that way that these will rotate freely. But Mini Z, since it's such small, tiny little spider gears in there and Kyosho is pretty cheap, I have a feeling that Kyosho is not going to have lubed these up. We'll see once we get in there, we'll see if it's lubed up or not. But, um, Basically, if it is lubed up, we're going to want to clean the snot out of this thing. I'll go over how to clean it, and um, you want to make sure that there's no grease in there, so that way when you apply your plastic bonder, it bonds to your spider gears, and then they can't move at all. So let's get into this. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is just pull our drive shaft cups out and set them to the side. I'm going to put them in the same order that they came out, so left, right, because they are extremely different. Nope, that rolled. Quit rolling on me, guys. All right, so now, first step done. Next thing we're going to do is remove these screws. Man, getting really lucky with these screws. They're not bouncing off the table. Knock on wood. Anyways, okay, so we got that. We got the screws removed, so we should just be able to pull this apart. And bam, pops right open. We dropped one little gear. So we have one gear over here. And over here is our tiny little spider gears that I was talking about. And these little guys are what allows your car to transfer the power from either your left or right rear wheels, depending on how which wheel is slipping more. Um, the car will put more power to that wheel and it'll cause you to spin out. So what we want to do is go ahead and pull these out. I keep dropping everything, guys. Be more gentle than I am. Be more careful because you do not want to lose these. All right. So we have the first set of spider gears exposed. It looks like there's this plastic plate right here. All right. So that's what's in there. It's just another one of these little gears like this black one over here. Um, so let's just go ahead and pop this back on. You don't need to open it up this far. 
So now that I've had this thing pulled apart, I don't think there's any lubrication at all. Everything is just plastic, it's all dry. So we don't have to clean it, which will save us a huge step that's a bit of a hassle, especially for the 10th scale videos that I've seen. So all we need to do is go ahead and put some plastic bonder in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix up my bonder. All right, so I got my plastic bonder all mixed up. And so what we're gonna wanna do is just basically drop a bunch of glue into this gear down below. So I'm just gonna pour some in there. You don't need to be super careful. Like I said, you just dump it in there. So that's basically what it should look like. You just wanna have a bunch of glue in there and start putting your spider gears back in. All right, I got my spider gears back in there. They're sitting in that plastic bonder really nicely. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add a touch more on the top just to make sure everything is nicely coated. I wanna make sure everything will bond really tightly just to make sure nothing's slipping, no power is transferred. We're just dealing with direct contact. All right, in there. All right, so I just went ahead and worked it back and forth a little bit and you can see all that glue in there. It's just all spreading around, which is beautiful. Exactly what we want. Bam, slap that back on there. And now uh, essentially we have a locked differential. So let's go ahead and throw our screws in. Now that we got our screws installed, all we have to do is go ahead and slide in our drive cup. So this goes on, the long one goes on the long side, obviously, and there's a little notch in here. So you just have to line that notch up with the inside of your differential. So that might take a second to just get it in there perfectly. All right, got that in there. Took me a couple tries to get it lined up and then you just have to really shove it in there since I put a lot of binder in there. Everything's gonna stay super duper tight. And then we go ahead and put this one on this side. So I was just about to slide this guy in there and I did notice that there is some grease on this drive shaft for whatever this little plastic bearing, I guess, is. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and clean it under a faucet real quick with some hot water and then dry it off before I slide it in. So I went ahead and cleaned the snot out of this thing. It's all clean, there's no oil on it. So let's just go ahead and slide this in on this side. And again, there's gonna be one of these little um, marks, uh, notches out of the drive shaft. So you just line up that flat side inside and it should slide right in. Boom, there it is. So that's about it. That's all you have to do to take your open differential and turn it into a solid rear axle. So for mine, I have a 15 minute plastic binder. So this thing, as long as I set it down, it should be ready pretty quickly. But I'm gonna go ahead and leave this for 24 hours. Just let it completely cure, let it completely set. Honestly, this thing is probably gonna set for a few months because I'll put it in a new car once I get a new car. But um, anyways, I just wanted to make a quick DIY modification video for everybody out there who wants a solid rear axle but doesn't wanna shell out $40 for the stupid Kyo Show aluminum ones so this will work just as well as the aluminum axle as long as you do it properly and you don't necessarily need to use um you don't necessarily need to pull the whole thing apart and put in a plastic binder you can just pull off a drive cap a uh, drive cup now that i've seen it and i know that everything's clean in there i can confirm that you can just pull off one of these drive cups and just pour in a bunch of glue like super glue ca glue whatever kind of glue you want to pour in there some kind of liquid glue and then just shove these back on there real quick and hold it real tight let it sit for a while and that should be completely enough for the forces that this is gonna be under. Uh, Mini Z's, they don't put out a lot of power, so you should be just fine. So anyways, that's it for this video, guys. That's how you lock your salt, that's how you lock your open differential and turn it into a solid rear axle. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys are enjoying my content. If you are, please consider subscribing to the channel. It'll help a huge amount. My analytics show that about 75% of you guys are not subscribed that are watching. So if you guys could subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. It'd, make, it'd show me that uh, you guys basically are interested in this channel and me producing more content like this. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and see you next time.